Low-level prog charts are something you need to be familiar with as a pilot. Not only will you get asked about these on your written exam, but you should also be able to read them so you can avoid bad weather. And for my private pilot students, these are going to help us determine if we're going to be able to fly VFR. Before we break down these charts, I want you to take note of what these charts are called, prog charts. That stands for prognostic. To prognosticate means to tell the future. And that's important to keep in mind because these are weather forecasts, not current observations. And with that in mind, let's talk about deciphering these things. And don't worry, these things are really easy to read. Now, there are a ton of different places you can get these charts, but I'm going to show you how to get them from your official weather source, which is aviationweather.gov. Let's go up here to forecast, then scroll down to prog charts and take a quick look in here. Now, since this video is specifically for private pilots, let's scroll down here to the low level prog charts and the surface plots. First, we'll take a look at this low level plot. And as you probably notice, this forecast tells us the forecast from the surface to 24,000 feet. I'll go ahead and click here and we'll take a quick look. Before we talk about this, notice here that this chart is specifically displaying what the National Weather Service believes to be significant weather. Look down here at the legend and you'll see what that significant weather is. Now notice this note right here. It says for flight planning only, see TAFs for specific terminal forecast. TAFs are your official weather forecast. These charts just give you a general picture of where the hazardous weather is going to be. We'll get to that in just a second, but notice at the bottom left of each of these images, there's some data down here. This chart on the left is a forecast of the next 12 hours, and the chart on the right is a forecast of the next 24 hours. Above that, you'll see a little VT here with the Zulu time. This stands for valid through, so this chart is valid through 1800 Zulu on 28 April, and this one is valid until 0600 Zulu on 29 April. If we click up here on this time tab, we can change this if we need to make sure we have the most current forecast. Let's look down at these symbols and see what they mean. Solid red lines surrounding areas like this indicate the ceilings in these areas will be less than a thousand feet and or the visibility is going to be less than three statute miles. So why do I care about that? You probably already know the answer to this, but these are the basic VFR minimums. So these are going to be IFR areas. Now this puffy blue cloud indicates ceilings between one and three thousand feet and or visibility between three and five statute miles. This is what we call marginal VFR because whether or not you can legally take off VFR depends on the airspace you're in and what that specific field is reporting. Now, orange dashed lines like this indicate moderate or greater turbulence in these areas. Now notice this little symbol that looks like a little mountain. This indicates what altitude you can expect the turbulence. Just like on most aviation weather charts, to get the altitude, you simply add two zeros so up here, the turbulence starts at 24,000 feet and goes down to 20,000 feet. A lot of times, if there's any confusion on where the turbulence symbol goes, they'll draw an arrow so you don't get confused. So I know these altitudes are for this area over here, and this one goes down here. Okay, so you probably notice that this one doesn't have an altitude on one side. If you see this, this just means that the turbulence goes down to the surface. Now we have this dash cyan line. This tells us where the freezing level is in MSL. Down here in Georgia, you can see that the freezing level is at 12,000 feet MSL. Up in North Dakota, you can see it's at 8,000 feet MSL. Now, there aren't any here on this chart, but if you ever see this cyan zigzag line, the freezing level is at the surface in these areas. Right now, you're probably wondering why you care about this. This isn't quite as important for VFR pilots, but for IFR pilots, it's extremely important. If you're above the freezing level and you fly through any moisture whatsoever, like a cloud, you'll have a really high chance of picking up icing. And as you know, VFR pilots shouldn't be flying through clouds, so this isn't quite as big a deal to them. Now on the written exam, you'll likely get asked a couple of questions about prog charts. And unfortunately on the test, the charts look a little different than the real ones. And the colors are slightly off, but it still should be fairly simple because they give you a legend, and that's going to make it a lot easier. The big thing to remember though is to pay attention to the question and make sure you choose the appropriate chart. Because remember, you have a 12-hour forecast and a 24-hour forecast. Okay, I want to show you just a couple more things. Let's go back to forecast, then prog charts, and take a quick look down here at the bottom at the surface plot, which once again is a forecast, not a current observation. Make sure you choose the appropriate time you need, and once you do, this can give you an awesome view of the weather you can expect. Just like the other charts, down here at the bottom, there's a key that tells you what a lot of these symbols mean. In my video on weather basics, I explain all of these in detail and the weather you can expect from each. You definitely want to watch that if you haven't already. Actually, I may not have explained these troughs though, and you might find that useful. These are elongated areas of low pressure, 
and as you can see most of these extend out of the low pressure areas. Now if you remember what a front is, it's basically a large area of either low pressure or high pressure that can push its way into other areas. So it is possible for these to turn into fronts. With that in mind, you may remember that low pressure areas like these troughs are usually associated with bad weather, and that's because that lighter low air pressure is being lifted, and that lifting motion can cause the air to be less stable. And as I mentioned in that other video, the weather you get depends on two things, how much moisture is in the air, and the temperature. Remember, water vapor is lighter than air, so the more of that there is, the more quickly that air rises. And the hotter it is, the faster it rises as well because the air is less dense. So during the summer, it's not uncommon to see isolated thunderstorms in these areas. The National Weather Service has upgraded these charts a lot in the last few years because now, instead of putting a bunch of crazy symbols and stuff on these charts, they've color coded these to make it a lot easier. And these colors give you a really good picture of the type of precipitation you can expect. Now I'm not going to insult your intelligence by walking you through these, but as you can tell, this is a great way to keep an eye out for thunderstorms and determine the type of precipitation you can expect. I hope you found today's video helpful. If you did, be sure to check this video out next. When you go to take that private pilot check ride, you'll be glad you did.